Hey peeps, and welcome to another Ice Age 2 Your Model Railway Village video. Number 17 today, and oh look, <laughs> we've got a bag of grass, or, or, or well, uh, some sort of scattering, and another, oh actually, oh my gosh, I think we have two, yes, we have two, not one, but two, slightly gently curving pieces of track and we've now received enough of these pieces of track for me to project the kind of model railway layout that we're actually going to end up building and I can put that on screen for you now. There you have the projection I have made on what this layout is going to look like. I can't come up with any other layout projection other than this. This is based on the number of pieces of track we've received so far and the type of sections those track are. So, there we go. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> right, let's get it open and see what's in this particular issue. Okay, so yes, there we go. Two pieces of gently curving track. <sighs> Are they ever, ever going to give us anything else? So we've got some really light, uh, light green uh, scattering in this bag. Maybe it's like a, a surface scatter, or maybe it's for the sides of some really disused pieces of track, I don't know. But it feels quite nice, it looks quite good. Um, so, number 17 then. Newcastle Station, okay, that's quite random. Um, oh, and adding weathering to the train shed. Of course, yes, you're going to see the train shed uh, get built now as well. Um, I'll probably I'll probably do what I did with the previous episodes, like 16A, 16B, 16C, and so on. Um, but I thought I'd just get 17 up now anyway, because I want to keep cracking on and getting through them. Uh, paint effects for the engine shed. For a weather defect, in keeping with the appearance of an old train shed, find out how to add further colour to the building. We also give advice on using an airbrush, a very effective way of applying paint. Right. Okay. A little bit lazy. They, <laughs> they want us to go out and find out what we think the weathering should be like, and they want us to buy an airbrush. Hmm. Now, I know that airbrushes are really, really good, and the effects you can achieve with them are fantastic, but they're not cheap. Uh, especially if you want to buy one that's like a, a compressor-powered one. Um, although, I do think that you can buy canisters of air, and they're supposed to be quite... Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? An economical way of doing it. It's, it's not as expensive as buying an actual compressor, but it is better than just using, using your breath, using your mouth, using your lungs. So it might be worth looking into that. I might do that for you. Yes, I might. Um, I do actually have some experience in doing this. Because we've done a couple of buildings already, and I've even started to weather rolling stock and locos, I think we will be okay when it comes to doing this. And Hornby do a fantastic range of weathering powders and emulsions and, and paints and stuff. So yeah, that should be quite good. I think we'll get some good effects. Um, moving on then, this is really random, are they going to, I mean, I don't know if they're going to cover every major station in the UK, but for some reason they've, we, we, we're, we're at Newcastle, um, a very grand design, I must admit, it does look fantastic, if that is genuinely how it looks, that is amazing, there's nothing even half like that at Crewe, which is a little bit odd, because Crewe is one of the oldest in the world. A very grand design, Newcastle Station. Railway architecture across Britain displays a wonderful variety of design styles and creativity that hugely enriches the rail traveling experience. Newcastle Central Station is a great example. I'll tell you another great example. I was, when I went to the model railway Glasgow, I thought Glasgow Station was absolutely beautiful. Really, really liked it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, it's a, it was a terminus uh well it's not it's not entirely a terminus station is it obviously but where i was the you know the main um the main foyer the main oh gosh what do you call it now i can't think what you call it the main it's not a promenade it's not a oh i can't think of it i'll put it on screen it'll come to me later oh dear bit of creasing but yeah the main oh, honestly it's winding me up 
concourse. It's called a concourse. <laughs> I knew there was a word for it, I just couldn't think of it. Stephen Fry wouldn't have that problem. Yeah, the main concourse at Glasgow was absolutely beautiful. Really, really loved it. Really recommend it. Can't wait to go again. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, we were looking at Newcastle Station. Wow, is that actually like what the uh, track work is like at Newcastle? Or at least was, because that is fantastic. What does it say? Um, an early 20th century view over the east end of Newcastle Central Station and the, and the famous Diamond Crossing. A uniquely complex track system. Many postcards, such as this one, were created in the early 1900s with titles such as the largest railway crossing in the world. The crossing has been greatly uh, simplified since this photo was taken. So if we put those together... Wow. Yeah. That is pretty complicated, actually. I can imagine if one train is trying to get from one side of the station to the other, it's got to cross uh, quite a lot of track. <laughs> can you imagine modelling that in double O? Can you imagine actually using um, insular frog points and crossovers for that? The, the, it would just be a sea of plastic dead zone. Gosh, the amount of locos that would stutter and, and die. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then of course there'd be loads of good ones that just soldier off. Um, wow, look at that. See, I really should go. I've never been, there's so much of this country I have yet to see. I have never been to Newcastle at all. And I love the accent, I really should go. Um, so yeah, I'm going to find that very interesting. Because before this, I had never even, never even considered Newcastle as like a, a major station to go and check out. But look at that, that is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Something on somebody called John Dobson. Maybe he was the arch oh yeah, I was going to say maybe he's the architect. And yes, it seems like he is. Um, wow, beautiful. Really, really grand. Um, okay. Oh, yes! Hooray! Uh, the little part of the series that looks at uh, heritage lines is looking at the Seven Valley Railway in this particular issue. That's one of my favourites, folks. In fact... Hmm... Is it my favourite? I think it is. I think it's actually my number one, and the reason for that is because there's this, there's just this point at Highly Station um, where it's about halfway down the line, and it's got like a, an engine shed there that you can look around, like a, a museum thing. It's just so peaceful. It's so quiet. You can't hear any traffic. You can't hear any people. All you can hear are just birds and things. It's just, it's just beautiful. And the scenery is stunning. The locos are stunning. The stations are stunning. The staff are really friendly. Yeah, I think the seven is probably still my favourite. It, you know, things like the Keithley and Worth, they come in a close second. The Bluebell is a close second or third. There are so many out there that are just beautiful. But um, yeah, I think the seven is the seven valley has got a special place in my heart for some reason. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> the Seven Valley Railway is one of the most popular heritage lines in Britain, running along the beautiful Seven Valley from Bridge North to Kidderminster, crossing the Shropshire to Worcestershire, Worcestershire uh, border. Its fame has been enhanced by appearances in numerous films and TV shows. Well, that'll be interesting because I'm not actually aware of any shows it's been in, but it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Gosh, did that really happen? Do they have an A4? Bittern running down there. Oh my gosh, they did! Climbing Erdington Bank on the Seven Valley Railway. Built in 1937, it is the same design by Nigel Gersley as Mallard. Yes, I'm pretty sure that most of our viewers are familiar with Bittern. Trust me. Um, they're a wise bunch. Wow, that, that looks a beautiful old one. The Caledonian Railway Class 812 060, number 828, works a train of 40 coaches at Daniel Mills during the Autumn Steam Gala 2011 on the Seven Valley Railway. Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy reading about this because I do love, I do love the Seven Valley. Does that say LMS? Oh my gosh, it says LMR. What is that? LMR, number 600, Gordon crosses Victoria Bridge, en route for Budley, with an immaculate rate of a rake of chocolate and cream coaches. This superb logo was built during World War II by the North British Locomotive Company in Glasgow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Does anyone know if you can get that in model form? Because that really does look quite striking. I'll be interested to see if you can actually get a model of that. That is beautiful. So yeah, once again, folks, um, the, this 
part of the series has surprised me in terms of looking at Newcastle Station, and I'm really glad they finally got round to covering the Southern Valley Railway. So I am going to enjoy reading this. Oh yes, yeah, I do remember about the storm damage. I think quite a bit of the line was out of action for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, it's all patched up now though. I think everything's running again. I think. Um, I really should go and film it. Haven't been for years. Uh, right, so I really will crack on with building this um, loco shed then, the engine shed. You'll get to see that done. Okay, and the weather's getting better as well. So I think it's time I got into that garage.